How's it going guys? My name is Dave. I'll be walking you through how to be changing your brake pads on your STI. Tools you'll be needing is a hammer. You can also get a uh, mallet, a rubber mallet that will also help protect your uh, calipers. Flathead screwdrivers, you'll be needing that to compress the cylinders on the caliper. A flat center punch or a large nail. And a set of pliers to remove the cotter pins. We'll be working on my 2004 Subaru Impreza STI. This DIY video does also apply to other STI years. So our Brembo's are pretty much the same. Um, we'll be using the Street Performance brake pads by StopTech, bought through Rally Sport Direct. As you can see on the left, those are for the rear, and on the right, those are for the fronts. First thing you want to do is remove the cap off of the fluid reservoir for your brakes. You um, may want to have someone monitor that while you're working on it. Um, get your jack points up, and first thing you want to do is just take off your rims. You can see that here my brother Travis is helping me out on this project. So we're going to be removing the, the stock BBSs here. Once we get this out of the way, you can actually see um, how the whole setup is done. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is you can use a screwdriver, pry off the cotter pins. There will be two. There's one. On this one, you'll notice that he's having a little bit more of a difficult time. So if you want to, you can go ahead and get your set of pliers and just wiggle that thing off. It sometimes does get jammed just like that alright now there are two large horizontal pins holding on a metal spring hardware in the center of the caliper so what you want to do is you want to get your large pin or your center punch and you want to go ahead and lightly tap it so that way the, the large horizontal pin comes out the other side make sure you're very careful at this point because the paint on the caliper does get damaged very easily so you don't want to accidentally slip off and damage it. So just light taps, let it go all the way through, and go ahead and repeat the process on the lower horizontal pin. If you're just as clean as me, now would be a great time to actually get out like a microfiber cloth and have that opportunity to clean down your calipers. I usually use simple green that usually works out just fine. Alright, so you want to go ahead and push down that metal spring hardware so that way the horizontal pin can come out quite easily. That way you can get that spring out. And you can go ahead and remove the lower horizontal pin. Now you want to take your longest flathead screwdriver you got, that way you get more leverage, and place it in between the rotor and the brake pad itself. Pushing slightly, you can give a little twist, that way you can just build that gap up. This compresses the cylinders on the caliper, so that way you can just simply slide out the brake pad. and go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Like mentioned before, just be very careful that you don't go and chip the paint. It'll just pull straight out. So as for these um, pistons I was mentioning, you want to go ahead and use that same screwdriver and depress them so that way you're making a gap in space for the new brake pad since they are larger in width. And go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. At this time, if you have another person helping you, make sure that he monitors the brake reservoir. Make sure it doesn't overflow. We had a pretty easy time. Uh, we actually um, did this on all four corners without overflowing the reservoir. So, just give it a little push. Make sure that you get as much space as possible because these new brake pads are pretty thick. So, you just want to make sure they just go in easy. 
All right, we're going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the new brake pads versus the old brake pads. You can see here that it's a lot. It's been worn down pretty much. So what's going to happen is that um, you're going to take these old brackets off the old ones, place them on the new ones. They're clean. We, we prepped them before we started filming, so they will be black and dirty, but we cleaned them up so you can get a better view at it. On these uh, shims, there are arrows to indicate which direction that you'd be placing it on the caliper itself. This is important because if you place it in the wrong direction of the arrows, it will tend to cause a squeaky noise if you do reverse. And a lot of STI owners do have that problem where the shims are placed backwards and it does cause that squeak noise. Perfect. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put back the large horizontal pins. Now you're going to notice that the, the cotter pin hole is facing the camera. What you want to do is always have that face you because when you put in the cotter pins you just want it to slide in easy. If it does veer off to the left or the right you can just use your plier and just simply pinch and adjust it. Make sure it's facing you. So we're going to put back the metal spring hardware. just goes in like that. And you want to use one hand to compress down that hardware while you put in the second large horizontal pin making sure that the cotter pin hole is facing you. Now some of these horizontal pins will be a little bit stubborn so that's where the hammer comes into play again. So what you want to do is just lightly tap that right into place. The rubber mallet does help because you can see it's coming pretty close to the caliper on the back side, but if you give it a few short little taps, you should be safe. Alright, so here's a close-up view of the final. You can see the cotter pinholes are facing directly towards us. So at this point, just slip back the cotter pins. That's one and two and you're done pretty much repeat the same process on the other side this is for the front replace back the rim now the torque specs according to the the manual that the most shops use is uh, 73.8 foot pounds of torque so what we did was just use 75 foot pounds of torque when you lower the car, that's when you can go ahead and torque those nuts. Um, when you do drive, make sure you just double check the torque later on next time you have a gas station stop or next time you come back to your house. Um, when you do the rears, make sure you do put a brick on your front tire if you're on a slanted surface and release the e-brake so that way you can actually um, get these pads out on the back. So remove these cotter pins. And we're going to be using our center punch again with the hammer to remove these and if you don't have a center punch like I mentioned before you can go ahead and use a large nail but just be very careful because this paint does chip very easily Okay, so what we have here is that we just removed the, the hardware itself. I just cut through all of that. We're going to be depressing the brake pad. That's one brake pad right there. And just repeat the process. You're going to notice that we have those horizontal pins still in there. It's just been, those are stuck in there, so you might just want to use your pliers to get that out. But we're able to get them out with force. The bottom one we just couldn't, so we just left it there, but we got it out of the way. So you want to go ahead and depress that cylinder that is on the caliper. And make sure you have somebody monitoring the, the brake fluid reservoir. Make sure it doesn't overflow. In our case, we didn't have a problem with this. But just to be on the safe side, you might want to have someone double check that. Or you just periodically go up there and check. We're going to switch over the shims. Again, we did clean these shims. So they're usually not that shiny when you pull them off your car. But the opportunity is there, so we did clean them. Follow the arrows. Arrows always point up.
We're going to go ahead and then depress this side, repeating the process that we did on the back. And following the direction of the arrow facing up. So you can see this is the metal spring hardware. Just the same as the front. So you just want to go ahead and slip in the large horizontal pin. And go ahead and push that pin in. Fortunately for the rears, we didn't have to go use the hammer. It actually slid in pretty easily. I believe on the bottom one we may have, but but if you do need to use the hammer, go ahead, but just be careful. So just push down the metal spring hardware so that we can go ahead and get that large horizontal pin all the way through. So we did use the hammer, just a little bit light tap. And go ahead, you can see that we have the cotter pin hose facing towards us. And we're now just going to slip the cotter pins in. one and two last but not least make sure you put the cap back on to your brake fluid reservoir and go inside and pump your brake pedal to make sure you build pressure back into your brake system also make sure that your lug nuts are tight before enjoying your ride on your new brake pads thanks for watching if you enjoyed this DIY video and thought it was helpful for you please click the like button below and subscribe mahalo